and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will look at this 51.2 volt 25 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Let's get started. Thanks for watching again. This time we have a 51.2 volt from Crenia Power or Crenia Power lithium ion phosphate 25 amp. It is in a group 24 housing, which is pretty cool. And as always, my videos will start with what's in the box, specification, and then do some testing, capacity test, and so on. So let's get started with what's in the box. What you see is also what you get, but you get two sets of M8 bowls, and you also get this nice little pouch here, product manual, and share with us. Wait a second. <laughs> there we go. Here, service card. Let's talk about the specification. So this battery um, I checked online and what I have on the Amazon page. Uh, this is the current pricing, just for your reference, where we're at with this 51.2 volt battery. Here are the dimensions again. And I always like to refer um, to the manual if I have something, because online there's not a lot to know, talk about it, which is interesting. So we'll see what it means. But let me, let me talk about the specification. And I'm referring to this first or yeah, first page in the manual. And we can see those are the dimensions again, IP65 rated, and it's a 48 volt series battery. The cheap, the GP Grenier Power 48 volt series battery is a deep cycle lithium ion phosphate battery. Nominal voltage 51.2, right? Just keep that in mind. And we can see it's in a 20 group 24 housing. It has cylindric cells, so not the prismatic cells. At least that's what it's advertised with. And I believe somewhere I saw also that it was advertised with uh, Create A cells. Uh, I have to double check with that again, but uh, no worries. It's 24, 25 amp hour. And then we do have the charge specification and discharge specification here on page five. Standard charge current is five amp and maximum continuous charge current is 25 amp. And ideally that's what they uh, wanted to have. Recommended charge voltage is 57.6 to 58.4 volts. So your charger, lithium ion phosphate charger, should ideally be in this range, right? And it also has a cell balance uh, of 3.5 volts. We have a high voltage disconnect, and we do have then also the standard discharge, which is, oh, that's cool, standard discharge current is also 5 amp, which is 0.2C, by the way, and a maximum, maximum continuous discharge of 50 amps, so double off. Wow, so that is pretty impressive, and that's what they advertise with, pretty cool. And we'll see if I can test that later as well and low voltage disconnect. I didn't see any protection information here yet. So the only thing what I, what's interesting, I didn't see any operating temperature, um, what usually is somewhere pointed out, or gives us an indication if it might have some low voltage, high temperature disconnect. But um, I see never attempt to charge a battery when the temperature is below 32F or above 113F. Good to know. This is the housing, pretty straightforward, no, no Bluetooth, nothing else. Let's go straight to the capacity test and see what it is capable of. Okay, so we're, here we are with our Crenier Power, 51.2 volts, 25 amp hours. Right below there, you can see it, Crenier Power. That's the battery which just gets charged and I would say we'll go ahead and we attach the load and see that we can get ideally to a 5 amp, which is equivalent to a 0.2 C. So let's see where we're at, and that looks pretty good. Look at this, around 5. That means I will let it run now, and oh, it's a little crooked here, but hey, sorry. Um, but you get the idea. Um, I'll let it run, and as soon as we're done with this test, with the capacity test, I'll fill you, fill you in, and we'll see how far this battery got us.
Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Look at that, 28. 28 amp hours in this 25 amp hour advertised battery. So that's a big fat pass. Let's continue with the video and let's continue with the teardown. And coming back with the results, which is great, 25 amp hours advertised and we got 28 amp hour out of this battery pack. This is pretty cool, this is pretty impressive and aligns also with the cylindric cell experience I had so far. So this is pretty cool. So you get more than you pay for, so to speak. Pretty cool. All right, let's continue with uh, opening it up and let's take a look inside and see what it looks like, especially with the BMS. And if we can test a couple of things maybe as well. So let's do that. <laughs> all right, so I think that's probably one of the harder batteries to open, if at all. But Toby one Cunier Power, 25 amp hour, zero. You can see it's a mess. Usually I try to open it pretty nicely because then you can actually reuse it with the housing, but in this case, not possible. So whatever clue they used, I have no idea, but it's the hardest clue I've ever experienced so far with those batteries. Um, maybe there's a reason why, and that's uh, what we try to encounter or understand now. By the way, this is a battery which is meant purely for storage. It's not meant for any golf courts or anything like that. You know, just parallel four of them up to 100 amp hour, and then you have a, a pack of 100 amp hour in this configuration, 51.2 volts. This is meant as a storage battery. The manufacturer specifically said it multiple times, so I assume that those cylindric cells might not have the power like the prismatic ones, but who knows? Mm. So let's see what's inside, because, you know, might be interesting. I do not want to bore you too much, but we do have, oh bummer, we do have interesting, um, yep, those pads over here to protect terminals, I guess, both sides, they're not, by any mean, they're not, um, they don't have torque marks or anything like that, visible at least here, they're holding it tight, pretty tight, uh, I think we're dealing, we're dealing with a 12, with two 12 gauge wires here on the negative side, but also on the positive side. There we go. And you can see clue. <laughs> Everything is residue and clue and whatnot. Anyways, let's continue and try to see what we have inside. Here you can see a BMS. The BMS has some torque, at least marks over here, it looks like. Oh, by the way, hydraulic crimped, uh, at least on the terminal side. That's really nice. Uh, here, at least not the known hydraulic crimp. It looks more like normal crimp. Still looks pretty tight. It's a small BMS. We have another set of 12 gauge wire over here going from the BMS to the battery pack negative side itself. Then the BMS itself over here. Cylindric cells we can see here already in the configuration. We see silicone or glue on the sides, so nothing's moving. We can see that there is this high density foam here on the side as well uh, to protect the cells bouncing against it. Uh, but I think, yeah, I was able to earlier, felt like it was moving still. Of course, you will not throw around the battery usually, but it was able to move right and left. I felt a little, very little minor movement. Then we have those distance pads over here. And then we have everything else. And make it even more visible, I guess. Should be able yep, to take those off. Oh, wow. Oh, that has different cells than I expected. Nice, all right, so those are the cells. And they are marked, it looks like, with numbers, or labeled with numbers. There you have the pack, more visible. Very interesting to see that. And. They have a funny cutout of a, of, a, of a epoxy board up here. And down here they don't, but they have the bus bar underneath here, so I'm not taking this one off down there. But here on the sides, we can see high density foam all around. All right, so it looks like, yeah, this is the configuration we have here. And what I can see, there seems to be an up, no temperature probe or whatsoever. Or, oh wait, there might be one. Oh, oh yeah, there might be one. Looks like we have a temperature probe on actually two sides here when I see that correct. All right, we have two temperature probes. We'll give it a try and see if that actually is for high, low temperature. I mean, you've seen the capacity test. It did perform so well. 
And uh, I've not seen those cells so far. Very interesting, those cylindric cells. They're bigger than the normal cells, <laughs> I would say. So let me do the low and high temp protection test. All right. All right. So here we're charging with uh, around 16 amp. Uh, it's definitely more than 5 amp, so we'll let me test this. Nice, it did stop. Let's see if it cools down quick and if it comes back. It doesn't look like it's coming back. Let's see. But there it is back. Okay. Let's do the other side. All right. Looks like it works on both sides individually. That's good. And there it is back. Nice. Cool. Let's do the duster real quick and see if there's any cold temp cutoff at all. Ooh, there is. Nice, look at that. Whoa, nice. That's cool. I like that. Still pretty cold, let's see. Not coming back on, it looks like, I don't know. Maybe it takes a while. No. Nothing. Let me see. Might also be the charger, by the way. The charger has those, yeah, it's right back. So it might be the charger. The charger doesn't recognize that it can charge already. So it's not the best charger. By the way, there's a video out there, up there. Okay, let's test the other one. Oh, it was already. Nice, okay. Cold temp cut off. Does work as well. Well, I don't know at which temperature, but I can't measure that here. But it's coming back automatically on this one. This one seems to be either this side or this side, or it's my charger. I think it's my charger. Looks pretty good. It works pretty well. So nice. That's all I wanted to test here. Be careful here with those open wires, don't touch them. So that's pretty much all I can test. I don't have a high amp draw test here available uh, for this pack, so I can't test it really, but um, at least you see the build quality. In case maintaining, I don't think that this is maintainable at all, but it has at least a really good rating in the capacity test. It is, you know, built together pretty well. I'm surprised with how good they actually stand together. Um, that's very impressive. The bus bar is doing a good job, I guess, as well. It looks like it's, one thing I want to point out, what I figured I saw is here. I hope you can see that. Is here. Those solder turns there. Yeah. I think I could have done them the same way. Uh, I'm not really happy with that, how they look like. They'll use bolts over here, pretty nice ones. And then they use, and also they have torque markers on here. But they use this weird solder here. And it's uh, possible. It's possible that it might break over time, depending on if there's a lot of movement or whatever, or shaking. So that's, that's a potential failure point here, which is sad to see. Anyways, let me know in the comment section below what you think about cylindric cells. I'm really curious. I haven't seen those in a while. Those are totally different than what, what I've seen so far. But um, let me know in the comment section also if you would buy such a pack for storage for your home, um, backup or whatever you have, you know, the off-grid chat, who knows. Um, would you buy a couple of those and just parallel them together? Look forward to your questions. Thanks for watching. Cheers.